Brought to you by Eco Alkaline's environmentally responsible batteries, cat5.tv slash eco. I'm going to fire up a virtual machine here, and tonight we're going to actually look at some very basic uh, internet usage. And the reason that I wanted to do that tonight is because we have so many people who, you know, we've got such an eclectic mix of viewers. We've got those of you who are quite well versed at using the computer and, you know, you're, you're using Linux and you're, you're hacking away and you're, and you're learning your way around and doing very, very well that way. And then we actually have people who have never used a computer before, surprisingly, mm -hmm. who come to us and say, okay, well, I just bought my first laptop. And honestly, it took me by surprise the first time that happened because it's like, seriously? Like, this is... 2011, 2012, 2013, and you've never used a computer before in your life. Granted, usually se seniors, mm -hmm. right? like people who uh, yeah. you know grew up in a t completely different generation, have never used a computer because it's never been a part of their lifestyle and 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 the way that their society grew up. Mm -hmm. So, admittedly, that's that's usually who we're talking about. So, when you go into a store and you buy a computer, typically, what does it come with? Unfortunately, it doesn't come with Linux. Right, it comes with Windows. Windows 7 at this point, and progressively we're going to start seeing mm -hmm. Windows 8 more and more. So I'm going to actually log into Windows 7 so that you can see what this looks like. And I've taken the liberty of just installing a few different browsers here uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with how the Internet works. And tonight we're just going to take a real quick look at the very most basics of internet usage. And I would encourage you to email us live at category5.tv with your questions. If you're new to the internet, if you ever find that you're just overwhelmed, I mean, there's even that case where you're just trying to use your computer and you're not too sure how it works, and so you click on the wrong thing and all of a sudden it's, you know, something else is gone or you can't find your email or you can't find this or that. I know that it's a case, you know, with multitasking where, you know, if I bring up a browser and it covers my screen, well, how do I get back to the other uh, the other window. So we're going to really simplify for you and make it uh, easy for you to understand and hopefully be able to help you to understand how your computer works a little better and we're going to be doing that through the course of this series which we're starting tonight. So so I've actually taken the liberty of installing three what are called web browsers and we should understand what the internet is and, and the internet is not Internet Explorer. The internet is not Chrome or Firefox. The internet is, is an actual way that many many computers communicate together so think of it you know it used to be called the the information super highway right uh, you don't really hear that too much mm -hmm. anymore but it's a good comparison where World the internet is really this this massive freeway of of roads that are interconnected and and if you follow the right road you end up at the right place but whether you're driving a toyota or whether you're driving you know a, a chevrolet it doesn't really make a difference to your use of the internet or the highway Mm -hmm. So if I'm using Linux or Windows or if I'm using Firefox or Internet Explorer, those things are not the Internet. The Internet is the communication between all of these different computers. So, so when somebody says, okay, well, bring up your, your web browser, what they're talking about is bringing up Internet Explorer or Mozilla Firefox or Google Chrome, depending on what you use. Now, because we're on a Windows 7 computer, which comes with Internet Explorer, we're going to pretend you know, most likely that is on your system. Somebody who cares about you may have installed something better, <laughs> but Internet Explorer is definitely going to be a part of your system if you're using Windows. So when I click on that, it's a little bit overwhelming because out of the box, it's got all this stuff. I mean, I've got credit card advertising. I've got all these kind of, you know, it doesn't look very, it's a little it's overwhelming. Busy. It's busy. It's busy. It's Sometimes it's offensive. It and and it's it's not you know it's just okay well what do i do now if you okay. were new to computers it would be immediately overwhelming well now i'm on the internet right mm -hmm. I, I clicked on internet or internet explorer so now what do i do and somebody tells me okay well now i want you to go to category5.tv because that's this great tv show that's going to help you to understand how to use your computer so okay well it's flashing here so i'm probably going to put in category5.tv as they said and then what do I do? I'll probably, you know, hit enter. And where does that take me? Well, I thought it was supposed to take me to category5.tv, but it didn't. It gave me instead a, a list of a whole bunch of things. What this is, is this is not actually our website. This is, this is called a web search. So when I typed it in here, I wasn't actually going to our website. I was just doing a search. 
when somebody s- says to go to a website, if it's google.ca or if it's category5.tv, they're talking about this address bar, which is up at the very, very top. usually starts with HTTP, which is the protocol. It doesn't really matter to you. But it always has a website address, and you can change that to take you directly to wherever you want to go. Now, it's okay to do a search because if I know what I'm searching for, I've done a search for category5.tv, and luckily, my website, the, the television show, comes up first, and so you're safe to click on that, and it will get you there. But th- the thing is, is what's the next one? The next one is about a, a large format digital printer. The next one is a hurricane shutter system. So if for the moon. we're unfortunate and it doesn't lead us to the right place, we could end up somewhere absolutely off from where we wanted to end up mm-hmm. and then it, it can become overwhelming because the internet is a huge place <coughs> there are 82,500 results when I did a search for category 5 dot TV so that oh, yeah. can be very very overwhelming so instead it's good to use the address bar and I'm going to show you how to do that so up at the very very top here of your web browser we're using Internet Explorer right now I can if I click once, it's going to all be highlighted. If I accidentally click a second time, then when I start typing, it's actually going to go in and leave all the other stuff. So I can actually highlight this whole thing, or an easy way is to click three times really, really fast. So watch what I do. Click, 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 and it highlighted everything. Okay. So now I can type category5.tv into that area, hit enter, and it instantly takes us to, to the television uh, website for category5.tv. Similarly, if that was Google and you wanted to get to Google, you would type in google.ca if you're in Canada, and it gets you there. And that is another search engine. Okay, So that's Internet Explorer. Let's see what it looks like somewhere else. Let's go into Mozilla Firefox. So this is a different browser. Again, we're not changing the Internet. We're just using a different program to access it. And you'll see that it's pretty similar. It doesn't have the same clutter. But it does have an address bar, which we've just learned about, and it has a search. So if I search, I'm going to get a similar kind of result as to what I had on Internet Explorer. It's going to give me a list. And fortunately, again, we're the first one in the list, so we will end up at the right place if I click on it. But the other concern is is that if somebody malicious came up in that list and they were pretending to be Category5.tv, you might accidentally click on that and get into the wrong place and provide some kind of information to them that you don't want to provide. So again, we're going to use the address bar up at the top, category5.tv, hit enter, and it takes us immediately there. There it goes. So that's Firefox. Google Chrome is another popular browser. We're just looking at three tonight. And you'll see right off the bat, there's a search, and there is an address bar up at the top. If you have multiple of these kind of areas up at the top, like Firefox, for example, has an address bar at the left and a search bar at the right. The one that you want to use for your addresses is the one that says go to a website or it may have an address already there. If you're on Google, for for example, it will say www.google.ca. So to use a search effectively, so for many of those browsers, now that we know the difference between the address bar at the top and the search, which is usually a part of the website that we're looking at, this is Google, Um, or some browsers, as you see up at the top right of your screen there, have a search built into the browser at the top. With the search, this is is a little bit different because we're not going to actually type in a website address. When you have somebody's business card, it has their website address. It'll say www.mybusiness.com, whatever it happens to be, and that will take you right there if you put it into the address bar. On the other hand, if you don't know the website address, that's when you want to use the search. So this is where we would say, okay, I don't know the name of this television show, but I've heard that there is a show called Category 5. I started typing and it already started doing it. Space. And oh, look, it's already given me the name, Technology TV. And if I hit enter, then I can see the results. And it gives me, oh, okay, well, there's the address. It is actually Category 5.tv. Or similarly, now let's, let's make it even tougher for the search engine. Let's do a technology TV. Let's just search for that. And this will, now we happen to be number one for that result as well. <laughs> but let's see if we can get a good example. We'll do tech TV. So then we're competing against tech TV, the old uh, network television channel. So then you see we're actually at the bottom of the page. So if you clicked on the first result, 
we would be, you'd be in the wrong place. This isn't us at all. This is a, a Wikipedia article. It's like an encyclopedia on the internet that tells us about this tech TV um, television channel. So then I need to scroll down on my search results and I need to find out which one is the right one and I realize, okay, well this is the one because this one says free tech TV broadcasting featuring, broadcast featuring Linux, open source, cool gadgets and more. So I know, oh, okay, well this is the one I was looking for when I did a search simply for tech TV and I click on it. So if you're searching for a company, you can search for the company's name, you can search for uh, keywords, which are you know things that the, there we used uh, keywords tech TV. Mm -hmm. um, things that it's about and you might be able to find it on the list you may have to go to the next page next page we happen to be on the front page but that's that's because we do quite well in the search engines but so with the website address though when you have that you can actually get right there direct. using the address bar mm -hmm. direct link is there I guess there's pros and cons of each one I'm seeing in the chat room there are people who uh, prefer Chrome versus for the, for the different browsers yeah and yeah. We're, we're keeping things pretty simple tonight uh, for those of you who you know that the, we really want to help you to understand the differences uh, between where the address bar is and the search bar and and really get into the basics the fundamental how to use the internet mm -hmm. it's very important that you understand this because I want to I want you to find your way around and, and be able to find what you're looking for on the internet and actually get to where you want to go Category 5 TV is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. Thanks for watching.